know if I was gonna make it today. I was driving along the road and there was this huge boulder that fell off a cliff and into the road and it blocked all of the cars. Thankfully, no cars got hit, but we couldn't move. We had to wait until the Department of Transportation came out and they had these huge machinery trucks and they were able to move the boulder. I can't imagine what people did like a long time ago before these big construction trucks were invented. You know, that, that makes me think about this Bible story that I've heard, and it's one that we're gonna hear today. It was 2,000 years ago when another large boulder was put in front of a tomb, a boulder that no man could move, but something incredible happened. Let's find out what it is. After Jesus was arrested, he was led to the high priest. The religious leaders were trying to find a reason to kill Jesus, but they could not. The high priest asked, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Jesus replied, yes, that's right. The high priest said, he has spoken against God, he deserves to die. The religious leaders refused to believe that Jesus was God's son. In the morning, the religious leaders led Jesus to Pilate, the governor. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Yes, that's right, Jesus replied. What should I do with Jesus? Pilate asked the crowd. Crucify him, they answered. Pilate did not think Jesus had done anything wrong, but he handed Jesus over and said, do whatever you want. The governor's soldiers put a scarlet robe on Jesus. They made a crown of thorns and put it on his head. Then they mocked him. Here is the king of the Jews. They beat Jesus and led him away to be killed. The soldiers nailed Jesus to a cross. They put a sign above his head that said, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two criminals were crucified next to him. Darkness covered the land. Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus shouted again and then he died. Suddenly, the curtain in the temple sanctuary split in two from top to bottom and there was an earthquake. One of the men guarding Jesus' body said, this man really was God's son. Jesus was buried in a tomb. A stone was sealed in front of the tomb so that no one could steal Jesus' body. On the third day, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Suddenly, there was an earthquake. An angel of the Lord rolled back the stone and sat on it. The guards were so afraid that they fainted. The angel spoke to the woman, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus. He is not here. He has risen just like he said he would. The women left the tomb quickly. They ran to tell the disciples the good news. Just then Jesus greeted them. The women worshiped him. Don't be afraid, Jesus told them. Tell my followers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. Jesus appeared to Peter and then to the other disciples. Jesus also appeared to more than 500 people who followed him. Many people witnessed that Jesus is alive. Jesus' death and resurrection is the center of the gospel. In Adam, we were spiritually dead in sin, but Jesus died to pay for our sins. Jesus is alive. God gives new life to everyone who trusts in Jesus. I hope you enjoyed your Easter story today. What a powerful message that it has. In just a few minutes, we'll give you some questions to discuss with your family. But before we do, I wanna to read to you our Easter passage. Matthew 28, six, he is not here for he has risen as he said. All right, so now we have some discussion questions for you to discuss with your family. Parents, if you didn't know, these questions along with their answers can be found on the CPC Kids page at connectionpoint.life. So let's get started with question one. What did the religious leaders want to do with Jesus?
Okay, question number two. What sign was hung above Jesus on the cross? All right, question three. Who saw Jesus raised from the dead? All right, number four, how can you know you are saved? Okay, here's number five, and this is a big one. Why is the resurrection so important? Okay, last question. What does it mean to have eternal life? Kids, I want to tell you, this is a huge deal. This is a big story. This is the foundation of our faith. It shows us that Jesus is Lord. It is, he is who he says he is. And so if you have any questions, please take this opportunity to talk to your parents about it. They would love to talk to you about what a personal relationship with Jesus Christ looks like. Because as, as our Lord, he wants a relationship with each one of us. And parents, what an opportunity you have to talk with your kids today about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you have any questions or you need some help as you talk to your kids, please feel free to reach out to your church family. We all wanna help you and, and help each other as we shepherd our own kids. And so I'm gonna close this out by praying and kids and parents and everybody involved, I would love for you to bow your head and close your eyes and pray with me. Lord, I thank you, man, that all those years ago, that the, 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 stone, the, the stone rolled away from the tomb um, and that you showed us that you are who you say you are, that you are a Lord, you are a savior. Um, Lord, I pray for kids and parents um, and everybody in their homes that are watching this right now. I pray, Lord, that they would know um, that you desire a relationship with them. Um, God, thank you that you are a God that even when we mess up, um, even when we don't understand, Lord, that you pursue us and that you love us. And I pray that today um, that people would know that you are who you say you are. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining us today. I hope that you have a happy Easter. Please know that we miss seeing your smiling faces on Sunday, and we hope to see you again soon.